The current theory of subatomic physics is called the Standard Model. Although it has an unimaginative name, the theory has been brilliant at explaining how the subatomic particles come together to create atoms which make up the world around us. The Standard Model also explains how the particles interact via the forces of nature, such as the electromagnetism and the nuclear forces that hold the components of atoms together. But our current understanding of the universe is far from complete. The standard model of particles and forces summarizes our present knowledge of particle physics. It has been tested by various experiments and has proven particularly successful in anticipating the existence of previously undiscovered particles. However, it leaves many unsolved questions, which the LHC will help to answer. For example, the standard model does not explain the origin of mass, nor why some particles are very heavy while others have no mass at all. The answer may be the so-called Higgs mechanism. According to the theory of the Higgs mechanism, the whole space is filled with a Higgs field, and by interacting with this field, particles acquire their masses. Particles that interact intensely with the Higgs field are heavy, while those that have feeble interactions are light. The Higgs field has at least one new particle associated with it, the Higgs boson. If such a particle exists, experiments at the LHC will be able to detect it. Cosmological and astrophysical observations have shown that all the visible matter accounts for only 4% of the universe. The search is open for particles or phenomena responsible for dark matter and dark energy, as you've probably heard us discuss in previous videos. A very popular idea is that dark matter is made of neutral but still undiscovered supersymmetric particles. The LHC will also help to investigate the mystery of antimatter. Matter and antimatter must have been produced in the same amounts at the time of the Big Bang, but from what is observed so far is that the universe is made only of matter. Why? The LHC could help to provide an answer. This scientific marvel could help unearth some of the world's most pressing conundrums. Circular particle accelerators, like the Large Hadron Collider, use electric fields to accelerate particles and magnetic fields to stir them into a circular path. At predetermined places around the circle, particles moving in opposite directions collide, and we study the outcomes of the collision. In principle, one could accelerate many different kinds of charged particles in the LHC. However, one of the main goals of the LHC is to collide subatomic particles at the highest possible energy in order to look for new physics at the smallest possible distance scales. Putting all the above together leads to the choice of protons rather than electrons as the particles the LHC accelerates and collides with. The LHC was built inside an existing circular tunnel, and it uses the strongest magnets we can manufacture. The radius of the tunnel and the strength of the magnetic field determine the top speed of the charged particles that the LHC's magnets could steer around the collider ring. A charged particle traveling in a magnetic field automatically radiates away some of its kinetic energy as photon. An electron traveling in the LHC at the top speed allowed by the magnets would radiate away all of its kinetic energy before going even once around the ring. Because a proton is so much heavier than an electron, it loses kinetic energy to radiation far more slowly. So as the proton moves around the collider ring, one can keep replenishing the lost energy by applying an electric field. Doing that for an electron would take far too much electric power and be prohibitively expensive and impractical. This is the main reason why protons are used in the LHC rather than electrons to be able to achieve higher energies than before. In fact, the LHC was built in the same tunnel used for the LEP, which collide electrons and positrons, but at much lower energy, limited exactly by this energy loss effect. A milestone achieved in particle physics as neutrinos are being observed for the first time, not just in the Large Hadron Collider, but any particle collider. Six neutrinos were detected, interacting using neutrino subdetector Fassier Nu, which opens the door to studying those mysterious particles. Neutrinos are one of the abundant subatomic particles found throughout the universe. Since they carry no charge or mass, they travel almost at the speed of light they barely interact with matter. To neutrinos, the rest of the universe is incorporeal, having no material existence. That's why they are known as ghost particles. The neutrinos are collected by using a sensitive photo detector array in a completely dark environment at the Ice Cube in Antarctica. But for a long time, scientists have wanted to produce these neutrinos in particle detectors because the neutrinos that emerge from the decay of hadrons have a very large amount of energy, which is not very well suited. Faster new also known as a motion detector, uses lead and tungsten plates alternated with the layers of emotion 
There are three Neutrino-type flavors detected till today, which are Electrons, Teyu, and Muyu, as well as anti neutrino as counterparts, Jonathan Feng, UCI Distinguished Professor of Physics and Astronomy, and co-leader of the FASER collaboration comment on the FASER project, having verified the effectiveness of the emotion detector approach for observing the interactions of neutrinos produced at a particle collider. The FASER team is now preparing a new series of experiments with a full instrument that's much larger and significantly more sensitive. Given the power of their new detector and its prime location at CERN, they expect to record more than 10,000 neutrino interactions in the next run of the LHC and will be the first to detect the highest energy neutrinos that have ever been produced from a human-made source. The physicists are also eyeing the hypothetical particle, which is known as dark photons, which could reveal the nature of dark matter. But currently, neutrino detection in themselves are the biggest exciting step towards the understanding of the fundamental particles of the universe. The Nobel Prize was awarded to scientists who found that neutrinos actually had mass. This is groundbreaking because neutrinos have been observed to move faster than the speed of light, violating special relativity. How is it possible that a particle has mass but can cross the speed of light barrier? The claim that neutrinos travel faster than the speed of light was announced at the laboratory near Geneva, Switzerland called CERN in 2011. You must have missed their announcement a year later that they determined the experiment was an error. They found the problem and they retracted the claim. There isn't any way anything with mass could travel light speed, let alone exceed it. However, some physicists have suggested some hypothetical or theoretical particles that can travel faster than light, but yet it has not been proven experimentally or even the presence of such particles in nature has not been confirmed. One of these particles is tachyon. Physicists say they found evidence and data from Europe's Large Hadron Collider for three never-before-seen combinations of quarks, just as the world's largest particle smasher is beginning a new round of high-energy experiments. The three exotic types of particles, which include two four-quark combinations, known as tetraquarks, plus a five-quark unit called a pentaquark, which are totally consistent with the standard model, the decades-old theory that describes the structure of atoms. In contrast, scientists hope that the LHC's current run will turn up evidence of physics that goes beyond the standard model to explain the nature of mysterious phenomenon such as dark matter. Such evidence could point to new arrays of subatomic particles or even extra dimensions in our universe. This could imply the existence of a lot new theories about the universe, but at the same time, it would negate a lot of them as well. For example, the LHC could disprove the existence of ghosts. This was proposed by Brian Cox. The gist of the argument is that in order for humans to experience ghosts, some form of interaction is needed. On the other hand, the LHC is in the business of looking for new forms of interaction and has so far found none. Therefore, Cox points out, ghosts cannot exist or else the LHC would have by now found some form of interaction. But we just have to let the scientific method take its course and see where the findings lead us and maybe one day we won't be so terrified of the dark. So there you are guys, I hope this video offers some good insight. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.